since Elon Musk posted these tweets on X about the idea of catching Starship in mid-air with the new Mikazella system instead of using traditional landing legs. He has received more doubts than opponents rather than support. This makes sense because breaking the principles in rocketry is inherently risky let alone testing new things on a powerful rocket like Starship. Especially with this new approach, catching the Super Heavy will be like catching an egg. You know, it's so dangerous and even more. Let's discuss all the potential risks that SpaceX must face as they decide to catch Starship with Mechazella in today's episode of Tick Map. Although the applicability and effectiveness of the landing leg have been clearly proven through hundreds of landings of Falcon rockets, Elon Musk is still determined to say no to this feature on Starship. The motivation for this change comes from the desire to save mass and cost of legs, as well as to allow immediate repositioning of booster onto launch mount to be ready for flight again in less than one hour. However, the greater the change, the greater the risk. Many people also agreed with this and said that using Mechadzella to catch Starship instead of landing legs brought more risks. As we know, the launch tower has three mobile arms which play an important role in all aspects of orbital Starship launches. The first arm swings out to brace super heavy for Starship installation and connect the upper stage to power, propellant supplies and other launch and utilities. A more exotic pair of arms nicknamed chopsticks has a more complex job. On top of using the chopsticks to left, stack and demate starships and super heavy boosters in almost any weather and wind conditions. SpaceX wants to use the arms as an incredibly complex and precarious rocket recovery system. The problem is when you consider the fact that hull of the returning starship will be unable to sustain any sort of comprehensive load without crumpling. A good analogy would be trying to use chopsticks to pluck a butterfly out of the air without crushing the fragile body. Of course, a starship will not be fluttering randomly around. But precision is paramount here, with the only acceptable contact points being the specially designated lifting points on the Starship hull. This requires almost no relative motion between Starship and catch arms when contact is made, making for a very difficult operation all around. The next one concerns is feasibility and reality. As we know, SpaceX has many interesting ideas for Starship's future mission including landing on Mars and point-to-point -point travel on Earth. It means Starship's coverage in the future is very large. What if Starship keeps deployable legs? With deployable legs, it could land anywhere, not just limited to a tower location, but with the launch tower, they have to build this type of infrastructure wherever Starship plans to land, even on Mars, which has a different atmosphere than Earth. Not that enough. Some indicated that SpaceX seemingly underestimated the damage that Starship would do to the launch pad. Believe it or not, calculating the launch damage potential is actually harder than the landing calculations. For the landing, you have the mass of the rocket and you have thrust to slow it down. A fairly simple calculation. Yes, the timing and engine steering need to be spot on, which is why they took quite a few trial runs to get it right. Rather than almost right, the launch pad is more sensitive. Concrete is very strong against pressure, but if you bend or stretch it, it'll crack. High energy fluid can turn a small crack into a big crack very quickly. To easily imagine the terrible destructive power of the 33 Raptor engine for the concrete launch pad, let's remember the explosion on OLM during flight 1. The rocket engines blow up the concrete deck and dug a hole. Concrete flow in chunks and damaged surrounding buildings. Next, before continuing, if you found these informations useful, let's subscribe to the channel and enable the notifications bell. So we're always staying tuned with any of our latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. And now, let's go back to today's episode. So is the idea of using Mechazella really that unfeasible? At least, SpaceX has demonstrated the Mechazella's arms being strong enough to lift and hold the world's largest rocket that's due to the hoisting system which includes three main components, the wire rope, supply reel sheave blocks, and the infamous oil rig draw works. One of many criteria for lifting objects weighing thousands of tons is to have a very strong wide rope. These wire ropes are made up of three basic parts. The core is made of weak synthetic fiber or a strong wire strand. The strand wraps out the core and individual wires form set strands. 
All of these wire ropes will be provided by the supply rail. The next component needed to lift the catching arms is the two blocks containing the sheaves through which the wire rope will be looped several times. Last but not least, the Mikazella chopsticks are moved around by the NOV ADS 30Q oil rig draw works, which are commonly used in the oil drilling industry. The ADS 30Q has a 2.1 million pound, which is 1,000 ton, max lift weight on a 14 string block, so powerful enough to lift Starship and the booster. Ever since SpaceX decided to remove Starship's landing legs, they have considered the benefits and harms of this decision. Of course, the advantages are always significant, and more notable is that the launch tower fits into SpaceX's future plans. The SpaceX Starship is supposed to land after returning to Earth from orbit, or from even further away. Therefore, it'll initially be moving at much higher speed through the Earth's upper atmosphere than the Falcon 9 boosters do. The Starship cannot slow down enough to land on Earth. When returning from orbit, just by using its rocket engines the way Falcon 9 boosters do. Therefore, it'll not need to be covered with heat-resistant materials and slow down using air resistance. Landing legs of the type used by the Falcon 9 boosters would be burned up in the Earth's atmosphere because of this air resistance. Another advantage of removing landing legs involves weight and timing issues. The booster is designed to land on its launch platform. That means that it doesn't need to carry the weight of the landing struts which allows for more payload. In general, every extra pound of the rocket is a pound of payload you do not get to launch. It's even much more complicated than that when you're talking multi-stage vehicles, but figure it out as a rough roll of thumb. And rockets are already about 90% fuel, as weight frugal with that remaining 10% as possible. The legs of the Falcon 9 weigh about 4,500 pounds, that right there is a medium-sized satellite that does not reach orbit. The legs on a super heavy would probably be on the order of four or five times heavier. So if they can't successfully get rid of them, that's a heck of weight savings. In terms of time, SpaceX is planning to help the super heavy booster be able to fly again within an hour after landing. They cannot do that if they have to lift and transport the booster back to the launch platform every time it returns from a launch. And remember, they're still going to have to fuel the booster and stack and fuel the Starship upper stage onto the booster. Apparently, any innovation leads to mixed opinions, especially since Mikazella's ability to catch rockets has not been tested in practice. Therefore, SpaceX could apply Starship's test, fly, fail, fix, and repeat, process to perfect its catching system, and they started it. On December 30, 2023, Musk tweeted that, the next stage of the Starship program should be called the Two Towers. In fact, since last November, we've seen pieces of the second Starship launch tower arrive from Florida. This signaled the information of a backup launch tower serving rocket landing test operations in the next test. Once both the vehicle and the tower are able to master their skill, SpaceX will likely upgrade the backup tower into the main tower to keep up with the Starship's high flight cadence in the future. In addition, do not forget that in the early days of Starship's development, Elon Musk was also ridiculed and doubted a lot, but look, Starship has now become an eye-catching target for both national and private lucrative projects even before it goes into operation. So why not raise the same hope for the Mikazilla project? And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications bell so you do not miss out on any of our upcoming space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to see you in the next time.